Since I started the series on 3D printing, I did receive some questions on whether it was possible to print your own model kit. I've of course been curious about this as well and wanted to know whether it was possible, what the downfalls were and what of course are the upsides of doing it yourself as well. So luckily I teamed up with Anycubic, they sent out their new Photon Mono X to see if it was actually possible. So just like any 3D printer pretty much out there on the market today, it is really easy to set up. You just need to peel off some plastic, plug in some of the components, and you are pretty much set to go after a little bit of setup on the printer itself by leveling the bed, placing, of course, the main vat that holds the resin, and checking that all the components are nicely secured in place. The procedures shown here in the video are pretty much standard with all of these resin printers. They all come with a nice instruction booklet that uh, just guides you through the entire process. It's really easy to follow, really simple to do itself as well. And if you're interested in more, I will leave links in the description. Once the main print bed is installed, it still needs to be leveled. And that is very important before you start printing. So be careful and make sure that this is done when setting up your printer. Now it doesn't have to be done every single time. I recommend doing it when the printer arrives and in the initial setup to be done first. And then after, uh, let's say you've tried a couple prints and maybe it fails a couple of times, you'd need to do it again. If prints still keep coming out perfectly, I don't recommend leveling the printer every single time as it simply isn't necessary. The prints come out, so the printer is set up fine too. Now, of course, there are many other reasons why prints fail, but this is just one of them. Be sure that the printer is leveled and that the bed is secured and leveled too before trying anything else. It does have to do with a lot of other things like the temperature in the room, maybe just the file being set up completely incorrect or some of the supports just being wrong. That's just one of the many reasons, of course. So with that bed now leveled, I install the vat itself. That needs to be screwed down on both sides, left and right. Make sure that it is nicely tightened down and doesn't move. With the printer, you also get a USB stick. And on that USB stick, there are a couple of test files to be printed. Once those test files or calibration files print successfully, you can safely say the printer is set up securely and you're good to go on the rest of the parts. In this case, I'm using some Anycubic resin as well. This is just their standard gray resin. And I just shake it up before using, pour it in, and then start the print. A couple hours later and the print should turn out something like this. With this just being a calibration file, I didn't really take all that much care into cleaning it up properly. I just wanted to remove it off the printer, see if it printed successfully, and then move on to some of the more important pieces. As you can see, it is a bit shiny, but it did capture all of the details. That's just a bit of dirt that was left. Uh, it was fully cleaned, so it doesn't leave any residue on your fingers. It's just a bit of a shiny spot, so it doesn't really matter all that much. So as you can see, the file itself came out pretty much okay. It does have a couple small imperfections, but overall it did turn out a really good print and that is safe to say that the printer is set up nicely and can handle some other stuff as well. So a little while ago I was scrolling through Facebook mindlessly and then stumbled upon a post of someone who printed a Tesla Roadster successfully, painted it and made it look really good. And ever since I saw that post I really wanted to try it myself. I've tried it numerous times and it isn't really all that easy to do as the file itself isn't really that great. So the main body was pieced together by a buddy of mine. Uh, he designed the wheels for the Peugeot 205 as well, which I've shown in another 3D printing video and which will be shown in the uh, main build itself of the Peugeot 2 later on. And he helped me put this piece together. So the main body itself is made out of different components and can be printed separately, but you can also just piece them together and make it one big piece or just use the file that is uh, the complete body. Now, none of those files are really all that ideal as the body is sealed up. It can hold a lot of resin inside and also create a bit of a suction and just make the files fail. Now, overall, in this case, the body on the uh, top side turned out pretty much fine. 
The windows are recessed a bit as they were printed separately. Those were the parts I had shown earlier in the video and they need to be placed in at a later date as they can be painted black or just any other color you'd like uh, just to make it stand out a bit from the main body itself. Now the problem with this file is that it isn't really that ideal for printing on resin printers. There are a couple of holes, some other different weird lines in it. Uh, I personally am not really that great at uh, 3D designing so I wasn't able to get those out. Uh, my friend who was helping out wasn't really able to get those out either. So this file isn't really that great. It does have a lot of voids and small spaces inside that keeps resin in. So uh, this is about a week later and it still keeps oozing out resin on the other side where I drilled some holes for it to be uh, released. But overall, uh, this isn't really that great of a file. I will still leave the links in the description down below if you want to check it out, but it's not really that great. Maybe some of you guys are a lot better at 3D designing and can fix this. So if you can, just let me know and maybe we can figure something out to build this in the future. Now, of course, I didn't just give up there. I did find a site online which sells files for prints of actual model cars, and they supposedly make them into some kind of kit, but it's not really all that great. It's mainly just the exterior that resembles the car vaguely. It does have a couple of the details in there, but requires a lot more work. So overall, the print came out pretty much fine. It was exactly as shown on the site. It has a lot of the detail on the exterior and it also lacks a lot of the detail on the exterior. So the main shape of the body is there. It printed perfectly well. It didn't have any voids on the inside. So that is a really big plus point. I will leave a link in the description down below to the site I found this file on. They have many, many more. I'm not really sure if I recommend it as it does still require a lot more work to actually be completed. Now the reason I tried this Lamborghini, this is an LM002, one of the competitors back in the day to the Hummer uh, to become a military vehicle. It didn't win, so of course it's not really that popular, but it is still a Lamborghini icon in my eyes. But the reason I chose this one is that it is a fairly simple shape of body. So if I wanted to turn this into an actual kit or actual build itself, uh, some of the lines still needed to be added, of course, for all the panel lines as they aren't really in the file itself. There isn't really any detail on the inside. There is a bit of a file for the interior, but that's nothing to write home about. And the main window parts themselves are pretty much flat pieces, so they are easily doable. The headlight pieces themselves do need to be cut out and replaced with some more detailed parts or you can just paint them. They are in there but they're not that great of a detail. Some of the other pieces like the grill is a bit messed up but that is my own fault as I just ripped off all of the supports and wanted to see what the print came out as. Um, that also broke a part of the hood but that can easily just be filled and sanded smooth at a later stage during the prepping and we're good to go. I did add a bit of resin on the inside, cured it just to make sure that it doesn't move or break any more. Now, of course, on the inside, there are a lot of small holes, dimples, and other spots. That is where the supports were. These were ripped off as it isn't really that big of a deal, of course, as the inside of the body will not be seen again, and a little bit of sanding can fix this all. All of the pieces so far shown in the video, the standard test piece, the Tesla, the exterior piece for the Tesla, and of course this main body itself were printed at the standard settings. Nothing special, nothing changed, just the standard settings. So the layer height is 0.05 millimeters. It is visible in the print itself. There are some layer lines. Now, of course, you can just tone it down to a 0.01 and all of those layer lines will be gone. But just for the sake of the video, I printed it at 0.05 as of course that prints five times faster than it takes to do a 0.01 layer height. So in order to get this body to actually be functional as a kit piece, it does require a lot of sanding and also a lot of scribing as all of the panel lines on this one are not here. Now that is not a fault of the printer at all. That just has to do with the 3D file. Now luckily these are pretty straight lines, so they can be scribed in fairly easily, but it does still require a lot of work to get it right. Now this is all down to the files that were used. If you use a specific file or have specific files or are even capable of changing and altering the files to make them usable, that of course changes the entire thing. So aside from just 
printing the entire body to make your own kit, you can also just print sections of a body. So I found a file online of one of these Land Rovers, which had the facelifted body. This body here is from the Revell kit. It is the older version, and it doesn't really have all the pieces on it that I want. So it doesn't have the over fenders on the front and rear. The hood is a bit shorter. The uh, main grill piece itself is also pushed back a bit and just has a really classic appearance. So what I want to do in this case for when I build this is update it. The main hood itself is a bit too short, so I want the longer version. And the lights are pretty okay, so I might just use the standard ones. I want to print the new over fenders and also the new grill. And in order to do that, I found a file online, like I said earlier. I cut that in half or just removed the rear half and printed that. So to be sure that it all fit together nicely, I used some uh, parts in Mesh Mixer and also in T2Box just to change the entire dimensions of it. I kept the general shape, just set that at a standard size and then just changed the width, the depth and all the other pieces to just fit it perfectly to this 124th scale Land Rover from Ravel. So from this 3D printed piece, I will be using the new hood, the new grille. Maybe I will be using the lights and the mirrors as well. And of course, I want to do these over fenders. I could just cut them off of this piece or just cut them off in the file and print those separately. But we will see in the future. So that is, of course, what these printers can do as well. So with the Photon Mono X being a pretty massive printer, having a really big print bed and a good capacity for the vat itself to hold resin, it is of course mainly designed to print larger parts. Now nonetheless, even though it is designed for the larger pieces, it can print some of these smaller pieces as well with really fine detail. These are printed at 0.01 millimeter layer height and came out perfect. So to give a really long explanation, a pretty short answer, is it possible to print your own model kits? Yes, yes it of course obviously is. It is not as easy as I've shown in the video as you might think it is, but it is definitely possible. If you guys are interested to see more on this subject matter like the 3D printing, or maybe even do an entire build of something that came out of these 3D printers, let me know down in the comments below. It would be great if some of you guys can point me in the right direction to some better files, or maybe just help me in general. Like I said, I'm not really that great at the 3D designing part of it. I can figure it out once I have the files to be printed, but that is pretty much my capability.